All right, once again, I want to introduce Miss Lori Robbins, Chickasaw Storyteller. Lori just told me she's been telling Chickasaw stories for 18 years uh, through various mentors who have passed the art of storytelling down. So if you're, you're here and you can hear my voice and you've got little ones and you want to take part in some Chickasaw storytelling, come on down to the atrium here and I'm going to turn it over to Miss Lori Robbins. Y'all like to come over here and join everybody. And that way I won't have, won't make you feel like you're not included. <laughs> well, how, are you having a great day? Good morning. All right. Well, I'm going to share some stories with you. Some are, some are Chickasaw stories. And I'm out actually with the little ones here going to share a story where they get to help me. And this is a story I learned in one of my travels to another land and I love the story because the children get to help tell it. Well the first story I will share and I'll give a bit of history of our storytelling. We told stories in the past because they taught our children life lessons, morals, uh, right from wrong, history. So today we do it for entertainment but just because we do it for entertainment does not mean that the lesson went away. So when you hear these stories, hopefully you'll remember and then you can tell your child, you don't want to be like the dog in the story. The first story I will tell is how the dog greets each other. How does a dog greet another dog? Anybody want to, how do they say hello to another dog? Wolf, they smell at each other. Well, long ago, this is when the animals could talk to each other, there was a community of dogs. And in this community, these dogs were very rude, very hateful. They weren't nice at all to anybody, not even to each other. Well, the Creator saw all this happening and He was getting very upset because He knew those dogs knew how to act better. Do you ever hear that? I know you know better. He knew these dogs knew how to have manners and he knew they knew how to use them. So he came down and he lined them all up and he looked at them and he said, until you can learn your lesson and be nice, I'm gonna take your tails. So one at a time, he took that dog's tail and put it to the side, took another tail and put it to the side. And that pile of tails got higher and higher and higher and the creator just knew that they would see that big pile of tails that they would learn their lesson quickly. But that didn't happen. Days went by, they were still being rude. Weeks were going by and they still did not have manners. Months were starting to go by and they were still just as hateful to each other as they were the first day. And then finally, one of the dogs said, thank you, excuse me. He shared what he had. So it kind of spread. All the other dogs started to do it too. They were using all those manners that they had and they were being polite. So the Creator saw that and He kept His promise. So He came down and all the dogs lined up. And one at a time He was telling them how proud He was of them, how happy He was that they learned their lesson. But you see, when He was talking to that dog, He was grabbing a tail and He was putting on the dog and He was going off. Grabbed another tail, put it on a dog, and he went off. So when he was talking to them, he wasn't paying attention to the tail or the dog that he put it on. So when you see dogs today and they sniff at each other, what they're looking for is for their right tail. And that's the end of that story. <laughs> the next one I have is how Beaver got a flat tail. You see, Beaver's a very hard worker, and his tail was not always flat. It was very round, and it got skinnier to the tip. Well, Otter, who is a very playful creature, that's all he did all day was play in the river. And on this particular cold day, there was still snow on the bank of the river, and he was trying to pat it down to make a slide to go into the water. So he saw Beaver coming towards him with a lot of wood, and he said, Beaver! Why don't you take a break from working and come and swim with me? And Beaver said, oh no, I've got to fix my home. I don't have time to play. And I looked at that slide that you made, Otter, and it doesn't look very safe. So Otter said, if you can build something better, then go ahead. Well, he challenged Beaver. So Beaver went up to a higher part of the river. 
He got all the rocks out of the way. He piled and patted that snow till it was as smooth as glass. It was really tall. He looked down at that and he said, I don't know, Otter, this is a very high hill. We might not be safe. How are we gonna go down it? They thought a moment. I know, we can go down on our head. No, we'll never see the corners coming and we might fall off. I know, we'll go down it on our feet. No, we'll still go too fast. So he thought some more and he finally had an idea. I know, I'll put my tail between my legs and hang on real tight. So as he started to go down that hill of that slide, he was going up and down and he was spinning and turning and he was hooping and hollering and he went way in the air and splash into the water. Well, shortly behind him was Otter. Splash into the water. Well, when they started to come out of the water, Beaver got out, kind of shook himself off, picked up his wood, and all he could hear was Otter gasp. <gasps> Beaver, look at your tail. It's flat. You see, when Beaver went down his slide holding onto his tail. He made that tail get flatter and flatter all the way down. And Beaver turned around and looked, and when he did, he hit the water, and he made the most unusual sound with the paddle of his tail. And when he did that, Beaver from all directions came out of nowhere that they didn't even know were there. So to this day, when there's danger and other beaver need to be warned, Beaver will slap his tail against the water. And that's the end of that story. This story I learned, um, I was invited to go to China a few years ago. And we exchanged stories. And I love the story because the kids, or, and adults too, get to help me tell it. So when you hear me say the word complain, you say, oh, poor, poor me. OK, let's practice. Complain. Oh, poor, poor me. All right, this story is about the old lady who lived in an oil bottle. Now, don't ask me right now why she lived in the bottle. Just go with it for the story, okay? She lived in an oil bottle. This old lady lived in an oil bottle, and every day she would come out of her bottle, and she would look at her home, and she would go, Ugh, I don't need to live in this bottle. You know what I want? You know what I deserve? You know what make me happy? If I had a cottage with a thatched roof and a wooden door and a gold knocker. And she kept on and on and on and she just kept complaining. Oh, poor, poor me. Well, as she kept doing that, a fairy was flying by and heard her. And she said, I can give her those things. I can give her that cottage. So she flew down and she said, when you go to bed tonight, you turn around three times and you just wait and see what you're gonna see in the morning. So she did it. She went to bed and when she woke up, she was in the most cutest, most beautiful little cottage she had ever seen. She had a thatched roof, a wooden door, a gold knocker, and she had this garden she loved. That was extra from the fairy. But she didn't say thank you or God bless you or anything to that little fairy. So that fairy went on and did her business, whatever she had to take care of. And a few days later, she went, you know what? I haven't heard from that old lady who lived in the oil bottle. I wonder how she's doing. I think I'll go check. So she flew down and she found her in her garden. And that old lady was complaining. Oh, poor, poor me. You know what I want? You know what I deserve? You know what would make me happy? if I had a mansion. If I had a mansion with tall walls and ceilings and I had my garden because I love my garden now, that would make me happy. Well, that fairy heard her and said, well, if that's what she thinks she deserves, that's what she should get. When you go to bed tonight, you spin around three times and you just wait and see what you're gonna see in the morning. So the old lady did it. She woke up and she was in a mansion bigger than what she imagined. She had her tall walls and her tall ceilings. She had her garden. Plus, she had servants to serve her anytime she wished. That was extra from the fairy. 
But again, she didn't thank the fairy. So the fairy went on and took care of all of her business. A few days later, she thought again, you know what? I haven't heard from that lady who used to live in the oil bottle. I think I'll go check on her. She flew down and there she was being served in her garden by her servants. And that old lady, you know what she was doing? She was complaining. Oh, poor, poor me. Why should I live in this old little mansion? You know what I want? You know what I deserve? You know what would make me happy? If I lived in a palace and I lived on top of a hill and I could see the entire kingdom below, that's what would make me happy. So that fairy heard her. That fairy flew down and she looked at her and she said, well, if that's what she wants, that's not what she's going to get. When you go to bed tonight, you spin around three times and you just wait and see what you're going to see in the morning. Well, that old lady did it. She went to bed and she woke up. And where do you think she was? She was right back in that oil bottle. And that is the end of that story. So what do you think the lesson was? What should the old lady have done? <laughs> she went in that model. She did. What should the old lady have said, though? Thank you. She should have, huh? I would have been happy with the cottage. Well, the next one I have is how Skunk got his smell. And this is my teacher's favorite story. And she loves telling this story. And so whenever I go out, I'm able to tell it. But if she's here, then I don't because that's her favorite story and I allow her to tell it. Long ago, Skunk did not have to smell. And the reason why is because he used to be as big as an elephant. His size scared everybody. He didn't have to have a smell to warn off all the other animals. Well, Badger and Wolf were roaming around where Skunk lived, and they were talking about how hungry they were and how dirty their fur coats were and how they needed new clothes. But you know what? I've never had skunk meat. I wonder what it tastes like. So they got a plan. In the following days, as Skunk was going about his business, a few things were changing. You see, when Skunk was getting out of bed, he was falling out of bed. And when he would go to the river to take a bath, he would bend over and look, and he could not see his reflection. And he would go to his favorite berry bush right outside of his home, and he couldn't reach the limbs. Skunk was shrinking every day he got smaller and smaller and smaller to the size that we have today. And he had no idea what was happening. And he was scared because all the other animals were looking at him funny. So he went to his doctor. Look at me. I used to be as big as an elephant and everybody feared me. Now look at me. What has happened? And his doctor examined him and he looked at him and he told him, I don't know what has happened, but I have something that will help you. Hold out your paw. So he did. And he put this little white powder in it and he gave him a little pouch to put it in. And he said, you have one rule. You can never ever be without this pouch. So Skunk put it on. He put it on his neck like a necklace and he walked home. But as he walked, it bounced and it got in the way. He couldn't see where he was going. So when he thought about it some more, he put it around his paw like a bracelet. He walked a little bit. Well, he would step on it and he would trip and he'd roll around. So he couldn't wear it there. So he thought and thought, where can I wear this pouch? Where can I wear this pouch? Where do you think he's going to wear this pouch? on his feet. <laughs> How about his tail? He put it on his tail and he walked around and he didn't feel it. It didn't bother him. He was pretty comfortable with it there. Well, after he thought about this for the entire day, he realized he was hungry and he wanted some berries from that berry bush. But you see Badger and Wolf were on the other side of that berry bush and they knew he was easy to catch now. So he opened up his door. He said, on the count of three, I'll rush out there, grab some berries, and rush back. One, two, 
three, and he darted out that door, and he rushed to that very bush, and here come Badger and Wolf around, skunk turned around, raised his tail, and Badger and Wolf had the worst smell in their face that they had ever smelled, and they ran off. And that is how Skunk got his scent today. And that's the end of that story. I'll tell another one about a dog. And hopefully, in my tradition, in the Chickasaw culture, once I tell you a story, I have given you that story. And it is now your story to tell and to make your own. So hopefully, you can remember at least one of these stories. <laughs> so that's why I tell several small ones. Now, this is at the time that the animals could still talk. And in this one community, every person had a dog. Not every family, but every person. And in this community, community the dogs loved to talk. They loved to tattletale. They loved to gossip. They loved to spread secrets. They didn't care what it was as long as they got to talk. And the people in the town were getting fed up. They wanted it to stop. So they went to their elder and they said, what are we gonna do with these dogs? All they do is talk and they talk way too much. So that elder told them, well, if we all come together and we all ask for help, maybe something will be done. So that's what they did. Well, the next day, an old man walked outside of his home. He saw his dog laying out there minding his own business. So he walked up to his dog and he kicked him in the side real hard. But the dog, he didn't move. He just laid there. So that man looked at his dog, and he kicked him again. Again, the dog just laid there. He didn't say a word, not one word. He looked at his dog. Aren't you going to go run and tattletale on me? That's what you do all the other times. So that old man went to his dog again, and he kicked him so hard that the dog made a noise the man had never heard before, and it scared him. What do you think that dog did? He barked. And that is why your dog barks today and does not speak. And that's the end of that story. Well, have you enjoyed the stories? Well, I'm glad you did. You think you have time for one more? <laughs> this one is how Deer got his spots. I love telling this story. Whenever children are born, of course, the first thing a parent does is protect them from anything that could happen. The same goes for animals, except deer does not have a way to protect her little one. Buffalo protect their little one by making a big circle around them. The goats of the mountains protect their children by pushing them up the mountain to get higher and higher away from danger. But the deer, there's nothing they can do. So, the, the mama deer just prayed and prayed to the creator, please keep my baby safe. Please do whatever you have to do to keep my baby safe. I have no way of protecting him. So the creator heard her cry and he heard her prayer. He came down and he said, I need some help so we can help protect your baby. First, you need to go get me the whitest of hide. You need to go get me pigments from all the colors that I asked for. And you must do it quickly and quietly because as you are out gathering all these items, I will be working. And when I work, nobody can watch. So the buck went away to gather all the items and baby deer was laying right there in the grass. And the creator leaned over and he took a deep breath in. And he blew it out and he blew it out and the wind went so far, the tops of the trees from miles away were blowing. And he took another deep breath in. It was just a peaceful moment when he did that. Well, whenever he finished doing this part of his process, the buck came back and he had the hide, he had the pigments, he had a bowl that he could scramble it all up in and mix the pigments in. And the creator took that hide and he cut and he stitched and he sewed and he took those pigments and he painted and he did whatever he had to do to that baby. And then when he was finished, he took it all off and the baby deer had all these spots on him. So the creator looked at the mother and he said, now, I've given him a way to hide. You must teach him to be very still because you see he has no scent because I took it all away. But if you place him in the bushes of the grass with the white flowers, he can hide. And to this day, 
when baby deer needs to hide, he will lay in that bush with the flowers and they will be perfectly still until danger is away. And that is why baby deer has the white spots and that's the end of that story. Well, I hope you enjoyed those stories. I hope you remember at least one to share. I see one got really relaxed. <laughs> I love seeing that. Uh, if you have questions, I'll be up at this table over here demonstrating beadwork, and I wish you a great rest of the day. Thank you.